What's up guys, welcome to the second tutorial on this channel. I'm Chris and thank you guys so much for the very nice feedback on the first tutorial that I've done. I've read through all of the comments both on the last video and on Facebook and on Twitter and quite a common request has been to explain how I've done certain things in some of my older productions. So for this purpose I have uh, picked all of the lights as an example for how to mix your bass in relation to the kick drum and how to layer your sounds, both bass sounds and lead sounds. So this is a very good example because the lead and the bass are basically the same in this track. So let's jump into it. This is how only the bass line and the kicks sound together. So it sounds a bit complicated, there's a lot going on already in here, but let's go through it step by step of how I've built this bass line. Alright, so the first sound is the sub bass. The sub bass covers only the very lowest frequencies. That is all it does. So all these channels, by the way, they play the same MIDI. That is why it's both a bass line and a lead in this case. So a very good example for this tutorial. The sound itself comes from Spire, a very cool plugin that I like to use a lot for uh, basses and for re sounds. And after that, I've put on a utility, which I've set to zero in the width, which means that the sound plays in true mono at all times. No matter what I change in Spire, the sound will always come out mono. That's just basically a, um, a quality control that I make sure to always be in mono for the sub bass. Then for the EQ, I have just cut out a bit of the high in here. I wouldn't really need that because the Spire cutoff is set to um, a very low uh, rate here anyway. But as soon as I turn that up, which I do at some point in the track, I still didn't want the very high frequencies to play through. That's why there's a little cutoff there. Um, then it goes into a compressor, which is not compressing the sound itself, it is actually the sidechain. So the signal in here comes from the kick and it sidechains the bass line. Um, then we have the growler. The growler is the second sound and that is basically the main lead sound or bass sound, um, the one that kind of is like the signature sound of this bass line. <laughs> The growler comes from Contact, which is um, a sample-based instrument here. So you can't actually go into the oscillators and stuff that much, but you can go into voicing and some instrument controls and a filter. However, I haven't really used any of these. I've tweaked a preset that I found sounded really cool. And then I've done processing to it in the steps afterwards to make it sound cooler. So this is the growler in mono. The growler in mono covers a different frequency range. Remember the sub only covered the very lowest frequencies and now the growler here covers frequencies upwards of 135 hertz. So basically I've um, put a high pass filter on this so that the growler and the sub together still cover a lot of frequency range but sound like this. <laughs> The next thing I've done is I've copied that growler on another channel and instead of having this in mono, I've made this very wide. So that always gives it a lot of dynamic. Uh, I love to make things very wide, especially in leads and basses, which is a weird thing to do because usually you think, okay, basses always have to be very dead center and mono, which is true for the sub, but anything over, let's say 150 hertz, you can go into the stereo image and make some very cool things happen with the wideness here. I have used the Isotome Ozone 6 plugin for this. They have some very cool presets for stereo image control. And after that, I've even made it even wider with a chorus plugin. So this sounds very much still in the center, but I wanted that sine wave, which is quite centered, I wanted that to spread too, so I've added a chorus to it. Then the next thing, because these three sounds, they sound cool. They were lacking a bit of attack or punch for me, so I've added another Reese, which in this case covers that, that bit right here. Um, and this is another sound which is more attacky actually, so listen to this. This one has a really cool attack. Some people might say, okay, why haven't you EQ'd the low end out of this? I think it actually works with the sub and there was no phasing issues. I always say trust your ears. <laughs> 
right? It adds a really cool dynamic to the sound. If it sounds good, then there's not really any need to change much because you can actually trust your ears and your speakers. Then in terms of rhythm, this little layer here is the stutter glide. The stutter glide is a sound that plays this same MIDI as well, but within Spire there is a uh, arpeggiator set to playing the notes as 16th, which adds a cool dynamic. The last sound in the chain is the Kyoto attack. I call it Kyoto because it sounded quite like a Japanese instrument. Um, don't ask me why I've called it like that, but in the process of making this song it sounded appropriate. So this is some sort of like weird attacky sound, but I liked it in conjunction with the rest. So uh, all together they sound like this. Now to one of the interesting parts, I have sidechain compression on every single one of these. I like to use compressors over uh, volume shapers because I think volume shapers always sound very harsh. Yes, they are very good in controlling the actual shape of that volume, but Sometimes I think they sound too harsh and they don't actually leave enough room for error and sometimes error is what you want in music because it makes things sound interesting and more organic. So then I put all these channels in one group. You can do that by marking them and pressing command G on your keyboard. In this group then I have processed all these into one signal quite a bit. So what I'm doing here is first of all I have a PSP vintage warmer here, which is a bit of a compressor, a limiter and a bit of a saturator in one. So this is in default right now. What I've done is I've, I've boosted the lows a tiny bit, I've taken down the highs a tiny bit, so I've added a bit of compression and a bit of drive, like only a notch. It doesn't do much to the sound, but it makes a difference. Then the next thing is an EQ where I've just controlled the very, very lowest end a tiny bit and the very, very top end a tiny bit. Then I've added a compressor which basically glues all these sounds together. It says add sustain. That was one of the presets from Ableton that I've used. And then I put a chamber on it. The chamber actually adds a room to the bass line. I like doing that. It is uh, tricky to do sometimes because it might actually make your sound sound very muddy. But it gives it that cool room, right? So you don't want to overdo that because you still want to have punch and actual bass frequencies in your sound. So this is just a tiny notch to add a bit of dynamic and room to the sound. Then this is quite unconventional. I have added another compressor which is rooted to the kick. So another sidechain. So I'm basically double sidechaining these. Now with the additional sidechain on the group I can control all of the sounds together. So if I wanted to have even more sidechain. <laughs> could add that. Now to the interesting part because this is what a lot of you guys have been asking about. How do you mix or how do you set your baseline in relation to your kick? And this is what I basically do. Usually the baseline for me plays a lower frequency range than the kick. So let's listen to the kick. The kick is already very subby, but I have actually taken out all the frequencies below 28 hertz. I've taken them out and I've added uh, frequencies at 65, which is the punch in this case. Those frequencies that I've boosted here, I have then taken out of the baseline so they don't interfere with each other. So you notice the 65 hertz here are boosted in the kick, but they are taken out in the baseline, 65 hertz. So if I would play these two together and I would boost the 65 hertz here, then we would have some weird phasing and some like actual overdrive on the low end, which we don't want. We want it to be clean. Um, same thing goes for the frequency range around 144 hertz, which uh, just sounded off to me if I boosted it. Let me play it to you. You can hear it starts ver sounding very boomy. So I've actually kind of like comb filtered this down a bit. Um, and that is really it. So that's how I've made the bass in all of the lights. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure to hit that like button if you liked the video. Make sure to subscribe for more tutorials in the future. And as with the last video, please let me know any other topics that you want to learn about. And I'll see you in the next one.